Um, and uh, you can break the rules, but people might get mad at you. Um, it, it's, a, it's a process of ongoing process of evolution and negotiation. It doesn't come top down for me, other than a handful of things like it's neutrality. We, we won't let the news become you know, heavily one-sided. So, so like, there's never, um, is it ever like sort of go into more columnist or like blog sort of feel, or is it is it really no? Like the, yeah, no. In fact, the community is strongly resisted when people have said, "I'm going to write an editorial or an opinion column." Uh, it's really hard to do that collaboratively, and it really isn't the the best thing to do with a wiki. Uh, start a blog if you want to start a blog. Yeah. How is Wiki Cities different from House of Bank London? So Wiki Cities is different because at, at Wikipedia, which is the main thing, uh, you're limited by in part by the neutrality rule. So if you want to create a uh, you know Tar Heels basketball fan site that's you know rah rah, and it could be the ultimate history, right? The history of the entire traditions, uh, all the famous players, famous coaches, all about the community, about upcoming games, things like that. That wouldn't be appropriate for the encyclopedia, but it's a perfectly valid type of community. Uh, it's supported by advertising, so uh, there's just ads which come from Google on the site. Uh, and that's how it works. And, uh, it's growing about 20% a month, so I'm pretty excited about it. Are, are the uh, page views available to the public for each particular page on Wikipedia? The number of page views? They are not. Why so is we, that? Pardon? Why is that? Um, mostly because there's a huge uh, there's a huge quantity of log file data, which is very difficult to process. In the past, we haven't had uh, machines to process that. We don't release the access log files because of privacy reasons. Um, we fought a lot about it. We had requests from researchers for those logs, which we would love to give out, but there's really serious privacy issues. So uh, if you have access to the logs, you can figure out what a person is reading, um, what they're editing, all that kind of stuff, you can pile that stuff together. Uh, in terms of releasing statistics, uh, we would have no problem with that. It's just we haven't had a lot of requests for it. And uh, we have all volunteer administrators, so they, they do what they feel like doing, and they just haven't done it yet. But there are statistics <laughs> online for the most popular pages, so the web is run sometimes. sometimes. There's no easy robotic way to just do that, figure out the number of page views per pound. It kills us on my video. I mean, our biggest pain in the ass for the past five years, and we do many less transactions. We only do like 12 million a day. So we're not quite in gym by slave. But I mean, it was costing me more in machines to process log files than it was to serve. It was just ridiculous. I mean, after a certain amount, you know your data was just giant. Yes, it's a huge difference. So I think what we're probably going to do, I have requested that we buy a, a large, nice machine for research purposes for log analysis, and then that way what we can do is we can set up a set of standard jobs which run. We can't release the raw log files, but we can release some process data and do that on samples of the data, whatever researchers find useful. There's a there's a mailing list for researchers, uh, Wiki Research Out, which is fairly young to mailing list where I'm inviting people who are doing academic research about online communities, about Wikipedia, to join the list to join with people in the community to dialogue about what are the things that we could do to provide information to researchers. And there's a lot of reasons we want to do that. First of all, it's our educational mission is, is fairly broad. But also, we would like to know from people uh, in what areas is Wikipedia really, really good and what areas is it not so good so that we can focus on that. And we want people to do research into what makes articles good, what makes articles turn out to be not so good, things like that. So we're very open to proposals. Okay, so uh, the Chinese language uh, Wikipedia is about, uh, the last I looked, which was a few weeks ago, it's about 30,000 articles, so it's considered to be a successful community. The editing of Chinese uh, Wikipedia is done mostly by mainlanders and uh, uh, a little less so from Taiwanese. There's a few in Hong Kong. Um, the uh, Chinese Wikipedia has been blocked in China on two occasions, very briefly. Uh, once was around the anniversary of Tiananmen Square. Um, another time was, uh, we don't know why. Uh, there's a story that the Beijing Wikipedia community, they meet from time to time, they went down to the ISP to complain on this block, and they were supposed to get a form to fill out. The ISP didn't have any forms because nobody had ever bothered to come and complain. 
complain with that. Uh, but they did complain, uh, and it was unblocked, but we have no idea if there's any causal connection between those two things. Uh, generally, we're, we're, it's, it's openly editable in China. I think there are a few pages which um, are filtered. Um, so like Falun Gong is one controversial area. But by and large, Wikipedia is available in China. It's a successful community, and uh, it's really great. Uh, I, I'm, I don't read any Chinese, of course, but um, the, the articles on, on things like Taiwan, uh, you know, conflicts, they're edited by people from both sides, and they really work hard to get this neutrality that's acceptable to everyone. So I think that's really wonderful for peace and understanding. So uh, I'm really happy about Chinese. Back here. Do you have any plan about a paper version? Uh, can you the, speak a little louder? Do you have any um, plan to release a paper version? Paper, okay, yes. Um, yes, we feel that uh, there's a few things about that. We have no advertising on the website, so uh, there, there's no revenue that comes in for advertising. Um, but we need revenue because it's a huge project. Um, it's very cheap to run because we're all volunteers, but the bigger we get, the harder it is to keep everything running smoothly. Even the administrative side of things is taking more and more time. Legal threats, complaints, all kinds of nonsense like that. We have to do it. Uh, one of the things that we think we can do, consistent with community value, is to sell paper books in bookstores. Um, we think there'll be a market for that. Um, the, some of the evidence we have, a German company uh, did a licensing agreement with us, and they released German Wikipedia on DVD. It became the number one best-selling DVD at Amazon.de. They sold like 30,000 copies in a couple of weeks, uh, which surprised me. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, they said, yeah, well, this company wants a license. They'll pay us one euro per CD or per DVD. I said, it sounds good. We'll probably get you know 300 euros or something. Um, and it was this huge seller, and I was really surprised by that because who who needs it on DVD if it's on the internet? I don't understand. Um, I'm not a very good salesperson, I guess. Uh, why are you buying this? Um, so I think people, but people do need it because they they need it offline, things like that. Um, so we're exploring things like that. It's also important. Uh, when I think of hard copy, I think of not only paper but also CD-ROM. This is important for our work in developing countries. There are lots and lots of places uh, where they have computer labs with old Pentium 90s. They've got CD-ROM drives. They could run Wikipedia locally, a browser for the students to be able to read it, but their internet connection is really bad or really expensive. And there are actually people doing this on a small scale. There are people who go in South Africa. I, there's a, a volunteer who goes. His normal, he, he goes to 20 different uh, schools uh, as a volunteer. He goes about every three months. His normal work is he fixes their printer and he helps with the network and things like that. But he's also going around and installing Wikipedia every three months. And he, he does it all himself. The problem with that is that at any given moment, uh, there are pages of Wikipedia which have just been vandalized. And so sometimes articles are missing or sometimes articles have bad words or things like this. Uh, what we need is a review process in the community to identify stable versions. So this is what's done in the free software world. There's always a, a long tradition of you've got the live development branch and then you have a stable version. And the stable version, you only accept bug fixes. And so we're looking in the community, how can we do this? It raises a lot of community questions. It raises questions of neutrality. Uh, you know, when, when we worked and worked and worked to achieve neutrality on an article, but then one person gets to pick which version is the real version. How do you trust that they're going to do it the right way? Those are questions that we're dealing with and ordering. But yeah, we would like to go to, to print because if there's a market for it, we can raise money to do it. And if, uh, there are lots of people in the world who need paper as well. You know, if you don't have electricity or clean drinking water, you certainly need paper. So, okay. Back here in the script sure. yeah. yeah. On the curriculum component that yes. you're working on, do you plan on gearing these textbooks towards school administration? And if so, how do you plan to sidestep the highly politicized controversies that occur in the textbooks? Right. So uh, right now what's going on is it's fairly free form. People are just writing things. And um, actually, contrary to my wishes, they aren't paying nearly enough attention to curriculum standards. But there are people who are in that project who pay a lot of attention to curriculum standards. Uh, so for example, if you look at uh, one I'm most familiar with is California. California has highly detailed curriculum standards. So 
you want to know what's supposed to be in the ninth grade history book, they've got several pages which detail all of the major uh, things that have to be covered in American history, for example. And so you can actually write to that standard and you can say, this is what we need to do. Um, regarding certain things like evolution and how to work that, well, we're really good at neutrality, so we can probably find a way around it. Um, and the other thing is we're, we're very independent and ultimately I cannot imagine Wikipedians creating a textbook that would be contrary to science. It's just not our nature to do that. So I think we would, as neutral as we are, I think we would kind of tend to come down on one side. Of course, people could take our work and modify it. We could take our text, couldn't use our name if we did that. Um, so those are kind of open questions. But the one thing we do know is that if you read articles on controversial topics at Wikipedia, most people would say, yeah, this is actually pretty good. Of course, it's not perfect. We haven't discovered the secret of neutrality for, for all humankind in the future, but it's pretty good. And if you really want an article about, if you want to understand um, the controversies in the Middle East, so articles about Israel and Palestine, generally our introduction is quite good. And, and most people on both sides would say, yeah, that's pretty good. I'll quibble on some points here and there, it's pretty good. So I think we can do a pretty good job on that. It is not quite a good number of how few people are actually writing it. So how do you ensure that minority voices are heard? How do you ensure that Right. Well, so because we have the consensus, because the wiki editing model is something of a mutually assured destruction type model, I mean, one person can hold their own against 20 people who disagree. Uh, particularly one thoughtful, reasonable person who puts their arguments forward in a reasonable way can do a really good job of mediating uh, conflict and making sure that a minority voice is heard. Now, it is, of course, true that um, we worry about systemic bias, and what I mean by that is if you take a look at who, who are these people writing Wikipedia, it is not nearly as diverse a group as we would like to see. Um, generally, uh, whenever I go to Wikipedia meetups, it, it isn't nearly as bad as when I go to software conferences. And like that. <laughs> um, but it's still, uh, it's still 75 to 80 percent male, um, and you know, uh, but, but it's still fairly diverse in terms of political opinions, religious opinions, things like that. But there is no guarantee other than part of what we try to do is we try to have this atmosphere within the community that newcomers are welcome. And we really try to support people when they come in with a new perspective. Um, and it's considered very, very bad form in Wikipedia to um, suggest that because somebody has a minority viewpoint, they shouldn't be editing Wikipedia. That's, that's really not our style. So it isn't perfect, but uh, we do, I think, a reasonable job of trying. I have a question about you were very small, and you probably had more quantity and quality, but you had a lot of articles that... Oh, I thought you meant when I was small. <laughs> <laughs> I had a surprise that you were very small. Yeah. What are the things that you would do uh, to kind of help foster that growth? Like, how would you... you were things that you put on the front page, say you had an article about chickens, just said nothing about bird. Yeah. But you don't want to feature that on the homepage, but you want right. to somehow balance those things out. When you're very small, you don't have a lot. Well, there were a few things that we did. First of all, nobody was paying attention, so it was just the community. So the front page of the slide was kind of a mess a lot of time. Um, one of the things that we do um, is that, um, and I don't know to what extent I can take any credit for this, but we're really friendly. I'm a very friendly person. So we don't yell at people or things like that. We try to welcome people and be friendly and open. That was a big part of the growth is that people can come in. The neutrality policy also, if, if, if we had said from the beginning, I'm, I'm not Catholic, but let's imagine I was, and let's imagine that I said this is going to be the Catholic encyclopedia, and on articles that the Catholic Church has a position on, we're going to put forward the Catholic view. This would alienate a lot of people who aren't Catholics, whereas we say, yeah, the Catholic view should be presented. It's an important perspective in the world, but it isn't the only thing we're going to present. We're going to actually have a, a very large umbrella, so that really helps. In terms of positioning things on the front page, well, one of the things that's, that's a, this, this term actually comes from the French Wikipedia. They call it the piranha effect. And this is the idea that if you have a short article, um, a stub as we call it, that it irritates people and they pick at it like piranha, you know, nibbling on something. And they actually, it grows into a large article. So we might put something, you know, the article is chicken. We might put it on the front page and say, chicken, it's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything better for us? You know, come on in and help us 
out. So, uh, yeah, so in, in the early days, it was uh, a little goofier than it is now, but um, that, was, that was part of it. Oh, I'm wondering, I look the site, so I'm wondering about the issue. You look exactly like Mark, one of our administrators, who's Dutch. The best looking administrator we've got. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, go ahead. So, I think actually a while ago, um, I heard the Pickles Latvia wanted to know, the Pickles Latvia wanted to know how hurricanes were created, so we looked it up mm -hmm. on Wikipedia and it showed us it was very good, we understood. And we trusted that because there's really no one any incentive to lie about it. Right. So, but then a lot of stuff we deal with, like I would definitely trust Wikipedia far more than if I just Googled and got like those those pictures of all that stuff. Right, right. right. Um, but still, there's an as an academic one with that. I was actually doing this stuff with the professor because the biography of Rudolph Buffett was very short. He wrote a bio of his own institution, fleshed out, and he was saying that he felt a little. I'm easy with the product just because it's a peer review mm -hmm. um, right. process where experts have held it over. So how, how do you increase that trust? I mean, I know I know that there's like basic democratic function that for every wrong person, there are 10 right people who will come and change the right back. But how do I know if when I'm looking at it that it has right. been minorly vandalized that I've noticed? Yes, so uh, that's one of the reasons we're looking to do a stable and some, some process of community review so that we have an additional layer of trust. Um, I think that the answer of how much should you trust Wikipedia, it really depends on the topic. It depends on what your purpose is. Um, if you're about to do brain surgery, I don't recommend looking it up on Wikipedia. Um, if you're just curious about hurricanes and you need to know because it's fun and interesting, it's pretty damn good, so it should be fine. Um, it, if you're writing your PhD thesis and you need to be right because you're going before the committee, I would you look at Wikipedia. Uh, it just depends on what you're trying to do with it. And I think the same thing is true about any encyclopedia. I get an email about once a week now from some college student who says, my professor gave me an F on my paper because I cited Wikipedia and he told me. And my answer is, why are you doing this? Uh, you shouldn't, you're in college, you shouldn't be citing Britannica. Uh, we have a whole page of Wikipedia called, it used to be called Making Fun of Britannica, which I thought was really nice. Now it's very dry, you know, a list of errors which we have found in Britannica, which have so far not been corrected. Um, <laughs> it's a little more neutral now. Um, but the, uh, there are a lot of errors in traditional encyclopedias. And, and in books, too. And in books, and in everything. I remember when I had these two sources, totally fantastic. Yeah, no, no question. Right. right. So I think one of the things that I tell people that, that as for university students, what you should use Wikipedia for, if if you're assigned some book that requires that you know some of the context of World War II, for example, well, read the book, yes, but if you need some background information, or you're, it, it puts it kind of, it's a great source for just getting broad general knowledge so that you can go into deeper, um, deeper work. But when you go into deeper work, you need other um, types of things. One of the rules of Wikipedia that I didn't cover today is uh, no original research. And this is actually relevant in this, in this conversation. Um, so we have a rule that says no original research. And this is a rule we originally created to deal with physics crackpots, of whom there are many on the internet. And so people would post in their, their new theory of magnetism, right? Well, as with most of the rules of Wikipedia, so you, I talked about neutrality. So neutrality has two purposes. One, it's the right thing to do for an encyclopedia. It shouldn't be a one-sided thing. And two, it's a social purpose. It allows people to get along. The same thing with no original research. We are an encyclopedia. We're not qualified to evaluate original work in physics. You should send it to an academic journal. That's what they do. That's the level of quality they have. We are qualified to look something up if you cite the you know, a, a physics journal that's published by Harvard, we can look and see if, you, if what you say it says is what it actually says. That we can do. But in terms of judging original research, we can't. And then the social reason behind that is it's a lot easier to tell someone, uh, you know, thank you for your wonderful work. I'm sure it's brilliant, but we're unqualified to evaluate it. Please send it to a journal. Um, rather than saying, you're a lunatic, please. <laughs> they tend to go away a little more gracefully that way. 
So, yeah, I think it just depends. I mean, we strive for the highest possible quality, but there are limitations of the media, there are limitations of what an encyclopedia should be. Um, and so, there's no simple answer to that question. Presentation online? Probably. Versions of it are. I don't know this particular one is in it. This talk will be online on ibiblio.org slash speakers. And we have other speakers there, too, which you can see immediately. Yes, this will be later. We have to do that. Okay. How do you deal with uh, whether or not to replicate, you know, other experts? Because, I, um, you know, I, I know there's all these kinds of, like, uh, you know, acting like Wikipedia is not a law. Right. I mean, I, I recently got in a little bit of a conflict on, on an article where um, this person who's maintaining it is, like, putting, like, both sides of this issue, whereas, like, the, uh, the literature review of every single medical organization, right, right. English speaking medical organization that I could find, fell on one side. Right. Or at least said, yes. we have no reason to look at the other right. side. So, you know, but he, this guy would claim to put both sides where actually he was, you know, basically in there. Right. And he refuses to put the literature reviews of these medical organizations. Right. So, in a case like that, the best thing to do is to bring in more Wikipedians to take a look at it. And that would tend to be very good. One of the things that I tell people is, Neutrality doesn't mean that we have to write in the article on the moon, some say the moon is made of rocks and some say cheese. Right? That's not neutrality. What we can do is we can come down very solidly and say, uh, you know, that a review of the literature shows that the vast majority of scientists agree a lot. Now this can be difficult on things like global warming where it's a bit more controversy, or in medical topics, sometimes people have an axe to grind. Um, generally, that works reasonably well. There are a lot of cases where one of the ways we deal with it is by splitting the article uh, to some extent. So we say, well, this, this article is about the mainstream medical view, which is such and such. And in it, we can perfectly validly acknowledge there have been one or two papers that took a contrary view. And these papers have been generally met with skepticism or have, uh, you know, have been refuted or are thought to have been refuted by this and that. Um, a good example would be something like intelligent design in the evolution article. I haven't looked at this recently, but what it should say is, in the main article about the scientific theory of evolution, that should be at most a, a minor mention, which is further down in the article where it says, I'm not sorry, you go to intelligent design, that should mostly be about what the people who believe in that put forward, what are their arguments. And then there should also be an article about the controversy, which goes mostly into the political detail. So if you might start out in the early stages of development, the evolution article might contain all three of those things. It's just like a big mishmash. That's bad writing. And it's human judgment to figure out how to do how to deal with it. But one answer is you say, this this article should be about the scientific theory, this article should be about intelligent design, this article should be about political controversy. And that really helps usually to, to make a difference. Sometimes if it's a if it's a minor point, I mean, can you tell me what the topic is? Or it's too complicated to go into. Uh, circumcision. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the guy who's, who's maintaining it is seems that's, like that's a, a known a problem fashion. area. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yes, I think you know. Yeah, there there are areas where, and this is where I, I like to do a lot of research and thought about areas where the process maybe doesn't work as well as it should. And uh, another example that I would give is, um, so two, two minor or smaller religions uh, would be Scientology and Mormonism. Scientology is very controversial on the internet. Those articles are quite good because there are lots of people on both sides who focus on it and they work really hard to achieve a neutral perspective. Mormonism is, is a small religion, but it isn't controversial for the most part. And Mormons tend to be very friendly, nice people, so they don't come in, and the Scientologists tend to come in and fight a lot. That's just their information. So we have articles about uh, characters, uh, or people in the Book of Mormon, uh, who almost no one other than Mormons knows about. And so those articles tend to be very one-sided, because no one else really knows about it, and nobody really is mad about it. And so they tend to be written by Mormons. And so somebody was just telling me about this, and they said, well, what I did is I went around to like 10 articles and wrote in the Book of Mormon, comma, and then this whole article, whereas really it needs a little bit more of a rewrite to be a little bit more saying, well, this is what is believed, not this is what is the case. Um, 
And so though, that's an interesting thing, because you would think that the Scientology articles would be the worst, right? They're actually pretty good. It's things that are, there are people with a, with a strong point of view, where there isn't really an opposition, that those tend to be not as good. Is it, is it, okay. yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned the evolution and intelligent design thing, because like, from a certain perspective, you know, that those things are very relevant. You know, it would be relevant to have a, a link to the intelligent design article or something. Right. Or, you know, or maybe even a brief mention. But on the other hand, I mean, if people are going to encyclopedia to learn, you know, facts, and uh, and they are looking for science. I mean, just by by definition, uh, you know, intelligent design is not falsifiable. Right. So I mean, so it would be deceptive to. It, some might say it might even be deceptive to even mention it on the same page because. I mean, yeah, but what, I, are we, what are we talking about? Right. I mean, I think most people would, would, would accept that it should be mentioned in an appropriate context. Maybe even mentioned from the point of view that although intelligent design is often discussed in the media, the majority of scientists don't agree with it or something like that. These are difficult issues, though. I mean, this is one of the areas, like, when you start thinking about these kinds of problems, this is why we, I, I so strongly resist doing voting or numerical weighting or something like that. It's all about human judgment and negotiation and compromise. And that's the only solution I know. Okay, with it's it's a little bit after five. I don't know who has this room after us. Is there any valid alcohol that wants to drink? Okay. We may have it a little bit longer, but I'd like to take a long enough break so that people that need to leave at five can go. Looks like it's over.